So it's a new year, it's a new decade, and a new format for our reviews here at rumblestrip.net. So for the first one, we're gonna dive into the 2020 Subaru Outback Onyx Edition. So the Subaru Outback is a vehicle that we're interested in personally. Well, maybe not me specifically, but my wife. She's been driving a Ford Edge for about four and a half years now. And, you know, it's a fine vehicle. It does what she needs it to do, but it comes with some limitations with our dog. That being the load height. Now, our dog is an Irish Wolfhound, which is a cool dog. Love him to death. Um, but trying to load him in can be difficult at times because he'll pop his front legs up in there, but then you have to lift his back legs up. Well, he's a 130 pound dog, so it's not always the easiest for my wife to lift him up and put his back end in. So one of the things that she's been thinking about is a station wagon. I know it's only taken mm, 17 years to convince her that station wagons are cool, but she's coming around to it. Anyways, um, so one of the vehicles that she was interested in was the Subaru Outback because she's seen them around and she thinks they look pretty good. So one of the thir first vehicles I uh, requested for 2020 was a Subaru Outback. We got the Onyx Edition because, um, but mostly the up trim model so that we could go do it with the 2.4 liter turbo. Now I have not driven the naturally aspirated version, but having driven the turbo version, I have zero idea why you'd ever order the naturally aspirated version. Um, especially given Subaru's clientele, or typical customers, and where they live, again, I'm not sure why you'd ever wanna drive the naturally aspirated version, especially because every single Outback comes with a CVT transmission. Never been a huge fan of CVTs, Subaru's are okay as long as you either put them behind their six cylinder engine or something with the turbo. Why? Torque. As long as you have sufficient torque, CVTs are serviceable. And this CVT is serviceable. But go to where a lot of people with Subarus live, you know, Vermont, Maine, Colorado, Wyoming, Idaho, Arizona, just other places where there's a lot of elevation. The 182 horsepower naturally aspirated engine with the CVT is gonna suck. Uh, there's just no two ways about it. It's, it's gonna be a little breathy and you're gonna be wondering why can't I get anywhere? With the turbo engine, you obviously a have more power but the elevation drop isn't going to be a factor because the turbo can make up for that lost horsepower it'll sort of uh, what do the airplane guys say that turbo normalize it so it keeps the horsepower the same at, at different elevations and when you're at a normal let's say at a sea level ish elevation we're at about 700 feet around here in metro detroit it's I'm not gonna call it zippy, but has more than sufficient power for whatever you need, especially for the type of person who's gonna drive the Subaru. Let's get the negatives out of the way first, um, because there are a few, and I wrote them down, so let's, let's go through them. Again, we'll go to who the vehicle's kind of geared towards in its typical buyer, and the climates they live in, no heated steering wheel in our vehicle. Now, in the limited edition, which is the very top level trim, I know it does come in that, but we had the Onyx edition, which is just one level below it on the XT. Uh, XT Onyx and then XT Limited are the two top trim levels. And on ours, there was no heated steering wheel. That was a miss, especially because we're driving it in January. It was cold. It was, it was definitely cold. Um, the second thing is going to be something we're seeing with more and more car makers, and that is they're putting all kinds of features into their app. Now, if you're an owner, to have the app and to have all that stuff there, maybe it's not an issue. But when you have it for a week, you have to download the app, you have to register it, you have to sync it with the car, and then deal with it there. The reason I bring this up is no remote start unless you use the app. For 
I don't know, 30 years, you've had remote starts on key fobs. I don't see why you can't put it as well on the key fob. It's just very convenient. When you grab your keys, you can hit the remote, right? It just, that's a thing. Um, I will call this, I'm not going to call it a negative, but I'm going to call it a miss and that there is no uh, wireless Qi charging in the vehicle. Again, we're at a price level and it's competitive set. It's become pretty standard across most vehicles to have, especially in 2020, to have a wireless charging spot. Um, it does have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, and that's great. And yeah, certainly one big reach would be for that to have the wireless CarPlay. Um, may not yet, it'll probably be a couple years, but it's just, it's the, the wireless charging is kind of nice. The other thing is that the backup camera in this thing is not the best, especially at night. It's rather grainy. Um, I'm not going to call it useless because you can see back there, but it's sort of like iPhone 4 level shooting in the dark kind of quality. It's visibly grainy, visibly noisy. It's just, you can see, but not with a whole lot of detail. My final gripe about the car is the safety systems. Now, Starlink is, is a pretty good system. And if I spent more time with the car, again, let's say we were to buy it and own it, we could probably tune it and adjust certain settings, but it's really aggressive in its warnings. Um, on more than one occasion, just driving in traffic and going across an in intersection, green light going through the intersection on the road, and it starts beeping at me. And it just random beeps and noises to the point it started to become a little bit annoying. Uh, Subaru is very committed to safety. You see it in a lot of their commercials and I get it. That said, it's a little much to the point where I'd want to start turning things off, which may or may not be a good thing. So it just personally overly sensitive for you. Maybe it's not. So again, the brief for this vehicle, at least from our perspective and evaluating is, would this make a good alternative for my wife to go from her Ford Flex to this Outback. And the key thing, of course, as we said at the beginning, is how easy is it to load the dog? Turns out that the load height for the Subaru Outback is almost exactly the same as her Ford Edge. It's within like an inch and a quarter. Like the difference when you line up the back bumpers and and kind of measure up and, and just look at it visually how how things load in. It's it's within an inch to an inch and a quarter of each other. It was somewhat shocking, especially because you get into the edge, you sort of have to not step up, but you kinda you know, kind of move yourself up into the edge to drive it, where in the outback you sit down into it sort of like a normal car. I mean, it sits a little higher than a normal car. It's got, you know, they, they like to say it has 8.7 inches of ground clearance, and it does. Um, but you would think that that load height, the, the floor load height would be a little bit lower considering where the driving position is one to the other. Uh, also, the rear opening wasn't quite as big as I thought it was, so the, so the dog had to kind of duck to get in underneath. Now, once he's in, he still couldn't stand up all the way, but he fit okay. Uh, he found a comfortable spot, and you know he was he was good. Um, you know, he rode he rode just fine in it. So it's uh, we'll call it a draw at this, whether it would be better or not. Um, I did give it to my wife to drive, and she she drove it for a day or so, and. She liked it. Uh, now she's one who doesn't care about cars. It, it's a, a car is sort of a tool as long as it doesn't do anything wrong for her. Uh, she, she's fine with it. So, but she liked it. She thought it was good. Uh, she did remark about the infotainment screen. So Subaru has really rolled out a, a really nice infotainment screen, well laid out, well thought out with a couple exceptions. And that's just because everyone wants to get rid of buttons and put everything on the screen, there's a few things where you have to go a couple levels deep into a menu, which not necessarily a fan of. Let's say, turn on the seat heater. So you have to hit uh, the, uh, the controls for the heating, 
and then you get the seat that the the seat menu to pop up and then you have to tap and adjust it there you can't just adjust it on the screen here you have to tap it and then have a pop-up menu and adjust it okay is that a minor thing yes but normally you can just reach down to a switch a, a toggle switch and flip it one two three or one two whatever or a button just tap it once or twice whether it's a physical button or an on-screen button just little things like that just maybe not quite as well thought as, as it could be so fuel economy is not bad uh, we got pretty much a book book fuel economy on this it's listed at 23 city uh, 30 on the highway, 26 combined. We got pretty close to that. I think our combined was 24 and a half, maybe as much as 25. So that's that's not too bad. We had snow and ice and just cold weather, so it's not going to be quite up to spec. In Michigan, winter fuel tends to kill uh, fuel economy by a mile, anywhere between one to three miles per gallon. And based on I don't know 10 years of doing this, it's pretty typical of what we see. One thing to note on Subarus of the last couple of years has been a huge improvement in their interiors. Now you go back four or five years, they were serviceable, but given their pricing, it's certainly the, the quality of the interior versus the price of the vehicle, that was not a good match. Now I would say you're getting a, a nice interior for the price. Are you getting a, a, an amazing interior for the price? No, but I think it's at, it's, it's at least where you expect it to be. Um, maybe a little nicer, you know, right, right on that level. So it's, it's super has done a really good job of that. And it makes all the difference in the world living with a vehicle long-term. You know, you look at a vehicle for its utility, for its price, for its looks, but at the end of the day, you spend almost all your time with a vehicle inside it. So that really is the most important part of a vehicle these days is the quality of the materials and the fit and finish and how quiet it is inside. And the Subaru Outback does a really good job of meeting those expectations. So in the end, does the Subaru Outback live up to the sort of legend that it has and the reputation that it has? I think so, uh, especially with this new generation. Uh, the interior, as we just said, is, is quite good. It drives nice. It, the, the best compliment I can give it is it drives like a car and not like a crossover. Uh, pretty much everything we drive these days is a crossover, and it feels like the center of gravity is three feet up in the air. This one doesn't. This felt nice and solid and planted, and you know it felt like the center of gravity is where it belongs, much lower. It doesn't feel tippy. Um, it rides well. It's quiet. It's really good on long distances. I think we did like 105 miles on one each way on a, on a, on a run. So it was very comfortable. I, again, going back to considering it, my wife considering it to replace her Ford Edge, even though the load height is not as optimal as she would have hoped, um, she spent some time with it, drove it, she liked it, and she will put it on a short list for vehicles um, when it comes time to replace this thing. So overall, uh, if she likes a vehicle, that says something, because again, she doesn't care about cars. They're, they're just a tool, but she liked it. So that that should say something right there, let alone my opinion of it. Uh, and my opinion of it is very favorable. I liked it. I think it's good value for money. You know, not quite 38 grand for this. The limited model is going to be, I think, another grand to 1500 more than this. A couple more things, better, little, little nicer interior uh, leather and stuff like that. Um, but even top level trim, 40 grand, yeah especially given what you're going to pay for anything else out there these days, it's not another crossover, which is the best thing you can say about it. So if you're in the market for, you know, a four or five passenger family vehicle that you need to haul a lot of stuff in, you got to look at the Subaru Outback. Don't just go shopping for another crossover. Look at this. It's a tall wagon, but it's kind of the best of both worlds. Twenty first century sun, you can remotely control your thermostat. Can't wire yourself up with the microphone to save your life, but <sighs> Eco B. How about Eco, not Exo? There we go, Eco B. Find thermostats. 
off. Now hopefully it doesn't take 45 minutes to shut off. There we go. Getting there. Four, three, two. Fan still going. Maybe. All right. Let's roll with this.